Hello, my name's Graham. Today we will go through the simple steps of installing a Fantech AVK1 ventilation system for toilet suites only. There are two stages with the Odovac kit. First stage is rough in, the second stage is fit off. Now we will start with the rough in stage. Looking at our display, you need to, you, you need to work out exactly where your toilet is going to be situated. So when you're running the actual Odovac kit down through the wall, it can be in a determined area of where you need it to come through the wall. This is a simulation of a roof cavity. First off, you've got to determine where the fan actually has to sit in, in the roof cavity. Then you've got to determine where you've got to run the exhaust PVC pipe to come from the back of the toilet system, through the wall, and out through the um, the eave on the wall on the outside cavity. Or, you can, if you haven't got an eave on the outside of your house, you've got to determine where you're going to put the actual vent on the outside of the wall. Once you've determined which way the airflow is coming out of the fan via the arrow, you can mount it vertically or horizontally. Uh, once you've done that, you can mount it with the bracket supplied on the base of the, the fan, which also allows you to move it to the side if you want to by just pulling the bracket off and sliding it on. And then we position it and then we screw it into the timber cavity of your, of your roof. Once you've determined where your fan is and you've mounted it, use the di most direct route possible for the PVC fittings. If you have to make it put any bends in, always use 245 to assist in the airflow. You need to cut a length of 50 mil pipe, which is not supplied in your kit, and place it on the fan with duct tape facing the, the exit of the eave. After you've installed the 50 mil pipe, you need to put a 50 by 90 bend with a small amount of 50 mil PVC pipe, enough to exit the eave to determine where your grill, outside grill is going. In a situation when you're in the rough in stage, there will be no plaster on your eaves, so you have to measure where the pipe's coming out. So when, you, when the plasterer's put his plaster on, he can cut a hole in for you so you can place the, the uh, exit grill in place. After you've determined the, um, the exit side of your, of your fan, now's the time to to work on the intake side or the suction side, you need to have a piece of pipe for the length that you need to go to the actual suction side of it. Could be this long, we only use it this short because of our display. It could be a metre, it could be half a metre long. When drilling a cistern, especially a vitreous china, you need to determine where the water level is inside your, your system, which is easy to find by the float inside. Once you've determined that, when, when you want to position your hole, most systems have already got a hole which is an inlet for water. You try to roughly keep it in the same sort of dimensions as that same hole. So you measure your centre of your hole, you take the measurements across to the other side and just mark where you roughly want the centre of your hole. So the measure from the edge of your vitreous china to the centre of the hole which is roughly 80 centimetres. Then you just transfer that across to the other side, just so you can find where you want the centre of your hole. Then you try to put it at least from that top lip, at least 10 mil down from the top. So just transfer your markings up top there, leaving a nice little edge. And just as a guide, you can use an old 50 mil hole saw. Just find your centre and just draw a small circle around. Doesn't have to be too good. Just so you know, when you put it on the drill, when you've got to drill it, you know exactly where it has to be positioned. Before drilling the hole, we need to be able to take out all the flushing system inside the system out. To do that, just use a pair of multi-grips and just release the big nut on the bottom of the system. Just a couple of turns, it's not too hard. It's only place that you don't have to force. And just spin it off. And then just take it out. That's for two reasons. One, you don't want to go too far through with your drill and damage. Also, it's easier cleaning once you've, once you've drilled it to get all those little bits of chips and that out of it. If you have access to a drill press, which we have in, in our warehouse, um, just make sure that you've lined everything up with the circle that you've marked and you've got plenty of water on hand. The ideal thing is an old water bottle with just a couple of holes in the lid.
If you don't have access to a drill press, you can always use a cordless or a cord drill. Just the same things apply, water, and, a, and put, make sure you've got it on a nice steady surface that's a good height for you. Just place it on top where you've marked your hole, just drill it by hand, and just plenty of water again, and it, you'll find it's very easy just to go through. After you've finished drilling the, your hole, just make sure you just wipe off all the excess, not only on the outside, but on the inside, because it could maybe get in the way of flushing. You don't have to be spot on, but if there's any big, big chips in there, just wipe it out with a rag. That's all you need to do. Once you've drilled, don't forget, you gotta put your working mechanism back inside. Uh, just reverse the steps that you did to take it out, poke it through the bottom, spin the base nut back on. Don't over tighten, it just needs a couple of turns. Your plumber, when he installs it, will always check those things anyway. Then you're ready to attach it to your to the uh, toilet seat and determine where your hole is in the wall. Once you've drilled your hole, put all your toilet together, position it where you've predetermined where you want it to go regarding pipes and that all through sewage and all that. You lift the lid off the top and you'll see where you've drilled your hole. For the Yodavac kit, just get a pencil, texter, pen, anything you mark it through and just basically just mark a mark on the wall. And once you take the toilet away, it'll show you exactly where you need to be. Now we have to put in our 50 by 90 degree bend onto the end of this suction pipe in such a manner. And then we need to attach the 50 mil pipe through the wall cavity up into this bend. Now that we've got the 50 mil pipe in place, we need to position the 50 mil socket, which don't forget needs to be glued. After putting the 50 mil socket in place, we need to put a 40 by 50 flat reducer in place, which just sits inside the 50 mil socket like so. After putting the 50 mil socket and socket reducer in place, you have a piece of 40 mil PVC pipe with a 40 mil flexible hosing, which you insert like that. Doesn't matter where you put it for the time being because that's for an adjustment reason later on. Then a shorter piece of 40 mil pipe then a 40 by 90 degree bend, which is the rest of your WC con connection in the rough end stage. Once you've put all your WC connection together in rough end stage, all you have to do is, is push, push it in to the flat reducer, like so. Once the WC connection is inserted in, in, in its rough end stage, the hole where we predetermined would go through the back of the toilet will determine the height this, this flexible hose lets you adjust it up and down so you can pull it through the hole. Now we're getting into stage two, which, which is our fit off stage. Firstly, we're going to be drilling our hole, which, which we predetermined from our, the hole in the back of our system. We we'll just use a standard 50 mil hole. Like so. After we've drilled the hole in the wall, it makes it easy to find the 40 mil bend that we've, that we've put on the end of the WC connection. Next, we need to put that small length of PVC, 40 mil, into that, once it's been glued, and then insert one of the cover plates over the pipe. Once the pipe's through the wall, we just need to insert the pipe through the back of the system, as on our display. Now we'll just Trim off the piece of pipe inserted through the back of the system. And pull it out. Now it's time to insert the cover plate. The idea of these lines is so you can mark where you need to trim off the excess. So just insert it like that. Put it, say one, even two lines below the top of the the system, that's, that's so the lid will go down safely onto the top. So just put a small mark on it, which one you need to cut it, and then just take it back off again. With a sharp Stanley knife, going by the mark and you've predetermined, just give it a nice, heavy, straight score across the lines. And then all you have to do, snap it off. And that's how easy it is. Once we've cut the cover plate in our predetermined area, just insert it back onto the 40mm pipe. Then we put in 
the balancing valve, which just inserts straight into the 40mm pipe. Like so. It doesn't matter if you have it up or down. It doesn't matter. The balancing valve is fully adjustable. The best position to have it is, is in the fully open, but if you want to reduce the amount of air being sucked through it, you just close it one or two notches, but that is the best area. Then we just insert the lid back on top of the system. After your fascias have already been installed, it's time to put in your exterior wall grill, which you just place up through the hole, which would be already predetermined. Insert the pipe into the top, drill, just screw it to the fascias. Then what we do is click in the fascia of the outside exterior grill, like so, and now we've completed the OVK1 out of X system. All fans and motors come with their own electric lead and power plug, but all power supplies must be done by a licensed electrician for warranty specifics and your own safety.